All righty. Well, praise the Lord. We're going to be in Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12 this morning. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Last week, we looked at verse 11. I told you I'd probably do verse 12 this week. So, <laughs> Scripture says, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold unto eternal life, whereunto thou art called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time together to be in your house, to celebrate you, Lord, to celebrate your word. Lord God, we just ask that you just touch us, move in us, Lord God, speak to us, give us ears to hear, give us eyes to see, give us a heart to receive and a will that we might obey. And God, we just thank you for what you're doing in us and through us, in Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. The title of the message this morning is Fight and Grab. Fight and Grab. Interesting, we talked about fighting in Sunday school this morning. <laughs> Um, there's an old saying that goes like this. Anything worth having is worth fighting for. Anybody ever heard that before? Yeah. I didn't just make that up. Uh, I've heard that line in many a romance movies where, you know, the main male character, you know, and the main girl character has split up for some reason and she's taken off, right, you know. And so his, yeah, she, or, you know, I mean, but usually, you know, and so sometimes it's the girl, but, but yeah, 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 yeah. This is more of a lifetime thing, I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, big difference, you know, yeah. But, but no, you know, one or the other, whichever, male or female, but one of them leaves, and usually their friend, you know, sees this person who is just, you know, so upset that their loved one has, has gone away, and they'll usually give them some sort of line like this, and I've heard this, you know, you know, anything worth heaven's worth fighting for, right? You know, so you got to fight for your love, man. You know, so, you know, he tries to woo the girl back, and, you know, of course, he, he usually gets her back, and they live happily ever after, right? right? But life is not a romance movie. BT dubs. <laughs> In case you hadn't figured that out yet. You know, I tell you, last night I was watching, uh, we were sitting there after... The, the wedding and all while they were dancing at the reception and I, I was like literally just like the walking dead. I was a zombie walking around there. I was hurting in every part, every muscle, every bone. And so I sat down a minute and I'm just sitting there at the table trying to figure out if I was dead or alive. And, uh, and so I'm looking around at all these young couples out on the dance floor and they're so happy. You know, they're so just just so excited just to be in each other's presence just to you know you know and I thought young love you know and of course you know they're not hurting they're not in pain you know they're having a good time <laughs> you know and and I thought well young love you know ain't it something you know uh I don't know if you call that love or infatuation to be honest with you but you know I remember those days and and I want to tell you you know while it's 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 nice, and we all love romance. We all love that, you know. But, you know, when you get older, 25 years, 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, you know, it, it's, it's more of a struggle than that. <laughs> so, um, not that, you know, me and my wife, we've been married for 30 years, and, and of course, we've had our ups and downs and, and, and all. And, uh, <laughs> but... You know, what I've come to realize through, through 30 years of, of marriage, and, and we've been together, uh, like, th what, 32, 33? I don't even, yeah. Um, you know, I've realized that, that more than anything, you know, the Bible teaches us that love is a choice that we make. And people choose to throw love away every day. Every day, because they lose that romance. They lose that, you know, and they don't fight for their marriage. They don't fight for that love. And I want to tell you, real love is a fight. Can I tell you that this morning? Real love is a fight. It's a struggle. To, to fight, to love somebody, you know, and to stay with somebody, even when it's not easy. 
even when everything's not going well. You know, one of the biggest causes of, of divorce divorces is, is money. Uh, it's not the only one, I know, you know, adultery, there are other things, but, but one of them is money. You know, people fight over money. And that's something that I've just never done. Not that we've not had money problems, but I'm not going to fight over money because what is money? Am I going to let money ruin my love for my wife, ruin our marriage, you know, split us up? You know, I don't care. Money is money. It, it comes just as, you know, well, actually it goes a little bit easier than it comes, a lot easier than it comes, to be honest with you. You know, it, easy, it's not easy come, but it definitely is easy go. But, but you know, it's just, it's, you know, it's nothing. <clears throat> Sometimes I, I just, I even hate money. Sometimes I wish we'd just go back to the barter system. You know, hey, I'll trade you this for that, you know. <laughs> Maybe work out better. Well, this is true. <laughs> this is true. She's trying to say I'm a hoarder. Yeah. <laughs> Not really a hoarder, it's just I, I, I get sentimental about things, you know. It's like, you know, I can't get rid of that. That was my first guitar. And I can't get rid of that because that guitar was bought from me, you know. Or I can't get rid of that because that, you know, everything has a sentimental attachment to it. But <clears throat> life is not a romance movie, as I said earlier. Things don't always come easy, uh, whether it be our relationships, whether it be jobs, or even in the kingdom of God, things don't always come easy. And sometimes you, you got to fight. Sometimes you got to fight, you got to grab, you got to wrestle to get what you want. There's a quote by Theodore Roosevelt that says, Nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, and difficulty. I have never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I have envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well. You see, life is about overcoming obstacles. And we do. They're not making movies about a guy who, you know, had, you know, his life handed to him on a silver platter, right? You know, we're, we, we're, not, we're not lifting up people like that. We're, we're, we're making movies about, you know, the guy who was born into poverty and worked his way up to become, you know, a successful person, whether musician, actor, whatever. You know, that, that's the people that we really admire. Like, man, look what that guy came from and what he made of himself, right? And so we admire people that overcome difficulty. We, we give credit to people who, who pull themselves out of uh, terrible situations and, and tough situations and, and overcome obstacles in their life to find success. And so that's what he's saying here, you know, which is, is funny because, you know, he was born into wealth, and, you know, but, but one thing about Theodore Roosevelt, no matter what you think about him, he, was, he, he, did, he chose not to leave it, lead an easy life. He could have. He could have led an easy life, but instead he chose to uh, fight. He chose to go into battle. He chose to lead his men into, into, into different battles. He, you know, he, became the, he formed the Rough Riders and became the leader of the Rough Riders, and that's a whole other another deal and, and I'm not a I'm not like totally uh, knowledgeable about all of that but I know that he was a man who didn't have to fight but he did he chose to and so you know he's saying I respect somebody that has to fight and overcome to achieve greatness in their life and so <clears throat> life is about overcoming obstacles an unexpected death or sickness a job loss, a broken marriage, and the list goes on. These are obstacles that these are normal everyday obstacles. Now we might not be we might not be sent to fight on some foreign shore in, in a war, but every day is a fight. Amen. I have to fight to pay bills. I have to fight to get my job done. I have to fight to please my bosses so that I don't lose my job. Amen? I have to fight and struggle and, and, and grab a hold of what I want. You know, and it, and it's and it's tough sometimes. <clears throat> we have to fight and grab to get ourselves out of the mud and the mire to find solid ground. And living the kingdom life, living as a child of God in the kingdom of God is no different. It is often a struggle, but the Bible tells us that that struggle is worth it. Amen? It is worth it. We talked about this morning some of the difficulties of living in the kingdom. One of those difficulties in living in the kingdom is forgiving those who have done evil to us. 
Right? The Bible says be not overcome by, by evil, but overcome evil with good. We overcome evil by doing good. Well, that don't make no sense. But that's the topsy-turvy kingdom that we, that we live in as children of God. It operates different than the world. It operates different than what we're used to. In the world, if you slap me on the face, I slap you on the face or punch you in the nose, you know, whatever. <laughs> but in God's kingdom, we're supposed to turn the other cheek. We talked about this morning. That's tough. That's not our nature, is it? Are y'all with me this morning? Everybody wait. Y'all tired as I am? <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so, so it, it does. It goes contrary to what our human nature says, but but it's worth it when we when we do what God says. You know, one thing that I, I didn't say this morning in Sunday school, but I wanted to say is, you know, what I learned. Oh, I got. I'm on a short leash this morning. Uh, what I learned through my life as a Christian and putting God's principles into practice in my life is at first, it's hard. It's hard to forgive people that you don't think deserve your forgiveness. It's hard to forgive people that's wronged you. But the more that you do it, especially with little things, oh, you know, you know he was talking about me or he said something bad about me or she got a tone with me or, you know, or whatever. You know, and then you forgive those little things and you let those little things go. Then when somebody does something major, it's a lot easier to forgive because you've, you've grown in that in the Lord. You've learned how to do that, amen? And what I found even in the little small things is, is that if I hold on to a grudge or bitterness, that just makes me bitter. Doesn't make me happy. Doesn't make me feel good. But when I let it go and I give it to the Lord, I am released from that thing. When I say, I forgive you, and I say, God, I forgive them, and I let it go, and there's no more grudge, and I just absolutely take my hands off of it, give it to the Lord, put it in His hands, then I am light as a feather. I don't carry that around. But when you hold a grudge and bitterness, you're carrying that around. You're carrying it with you everywhere you go. You ever heard the saying, man, you, you know, feel like you got the weight of the world on your shoulders? That's because you need to repent of all that junk, give it to God, and you can take His yoke upon you that is light and easy. Amen? Amen. And so I found that His yoke, is, uh, His burden is, is a lot better than carrying my burdens. Amen? So I just get yoked up to Jesus, give it to God, let Him carry that load. There's another old saying that says, nothing worth having comes easy. Nothing worth having comes easy. The greatest thing that we can have is salvation. Amen? The greatest thing that we can have is eternal life. Jesus said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his own soul? Amen? Amen. So you can have it all. You can have everything. You can have all the money, all the fame, all the power, everything that any person has ever dreamed of having in this world. You can have it. But if you don't have Jesus, if you don't have eternal life, it means nothing because your life is a vapor. It is a mist that appears for a little while and vanishes away. And when that life is over, you might have lived sumptuously here. You might have lived in luxury here. But then you've got an eternity of suffering and pain and torment in hell in the lake of fire. Amen? So what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, gets everything he wants in this life, but forfeits his next one? That's why Jesus said, the man who wants to save his life must lose it. You've got to give it up. Everything worth having, everything that is valuable is going to cost you something. And to have Christ and to have eternal life, we say, oh, you don't have to do anything. It's a free gift. It's not really a free gift because it's going to cost you everything. No, you don't have to die for your sins because Jesus did that for you. But you have to lay down your life for Him. You have to give yourself up for Him. That's what eternal life is. Making Him Lord of your life so that, that no more are you doing what you want to do, living how you want to live, but now you live your life for Him because He's the one that has bought you by His blood. Amen? Are y'all with me this morning? Come on. So we have to fight the good fight of faith. Paul tells Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. So what does that mean exactly? What does it mean to fight? <clears throat> we know what fighting is. 
To fight the good fight of faith is to stand and fight against the world, the devil, and my own flesh, and anything that would try to turn me from faith in Jesus Christ. Have you ever noticed that sometimes it's a struggle to believe? Sometimes it's a struggle to stand in faith? Our flesh is telling us one thing, but God is telling us something else. Life can be a struggle. Sometimes it's a struggle to preach because you feel like nobody's listening to you. But you got to press on and you got to struggle and you got to force your way through. Amen? You got to stand in faith. You got to trust in God. I've got to fight against doubt. I've got to fight against anything, the voice of the enemy, anything that would try to turn me. I have to fight against the naysayers that would try to discourage me and try to make me get discouraged about what God's doing in my life or where I'm at or whatever. I have to fight against all of that. I have to fight to trust and believe God's Word over everything that I'm seeing. I have to fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Amen. Paul says in 2 Timothy 4 and 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Paul tells Timothy, Hey, I have fought this fight that I'm telling you to fight. I've done it. I've fought it and I've kept the faith. I've finished it. And so that fight that Timothy is supposed to be fighting here, the fight that we're supposed to be fighting, we fight that until, until our last moment. Paul fought it his whole life. He said, I buffet my body. That just simply means fight. I fight against my own flesh to bring it into subjection to the Word of God, to the will of God for my life. It's a fight, folks. You've got to fight that good fight of faith. You've got to fight against false doctrine. We talked about a few Sundays back. You've got to fight against those things that are untrue. You know, uh, we're being bombarded by things that tell us that our Bible is not true, that what what we believe is not true. We have to stand in faith and fight against the lies of the enemy. We have to make sure that we are built on a solid foundation of God's Word, that we have Scripture to back up what we believe. Amen? And not just one obscure Scripture taken here and there and taken out of context, but rightly dividing the Word of truth, believing everything that it says in the context that it says it. Amen? Paul tells Timothy in 1 and 18 to war a good warfare. He tells him to endure hardness in another place like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So what does all this mean for us? It means that the kingdom of God, and to live as a child in the kingdom of God, it is a fight. It is a warfare. It is a struggle. And we have to fight. We're not just fighting against demonic spirits. We're not just fighting in, uh, uh, of, against unseen forces against us. We're fighting against anything, even ourselves sometimes. Sometimes it's a fight to get out of bed in the morning. Amen? And it ain't the devil. It's because I stayed up too late last night. It's because I didn't go to bed as early as I should have. Amen? And so, who do I blame for that? Me. So, in this instance. But oftentimes, we have nobody to blame but ourselves. And so, we have to fight. It's a fight to read and study the Word. There are so many other things sometimes we'd rather be doing. But we gotta, we got to carve out time to study God's Word and to know the Word. Amen? Amen? And so I want you to see that fighting the good fight of faith is a daily fight and struggle to believe, to live holy, to live godly, to do what God has called us to do, to be what God's called us to be. And then the second thing he says is lay hold on to eternal life. That just simply means grab a hold of it. That was Holt, not hold. Holt. (laughs) Grab a Holt. Grab a Holt of eternal life. Grab it. Some call it wrestling. You know, when I I first started taking karate back in the 80s, it was at the height of the ninja uh, craze, you know. All those ninja movies in the 80s, Revenge of the Ninja, Enter the Ninja, uh, huh? American American Ninja, right. I mean, there's so many ninja movies out, you know. And I loved all those old 80s karate movies. I watched them all. Not, not so much the, the, the old 70s and 80s 
Chinese kung fu theater type movies. Didn't care for those, but I like the, the Ninja, the Karate movies, you know, Karate Kid, come on. <laughs> One of my Karate Kid fans out. Whoop. <laughs> You know, love those movies. But almost all of those movies, it's, it's a stand up and fight. Stand up, punch, kick, boom, boom, boom. You know, most of, those, most of the movies that we watch with fighting is stand up fighting. But anybody that studies fighting and knows anything about fighting is fighting almost always ends up on the ground. Almost always. And so if you're a stand up fighter, if you're just standing up, punching, kicking. I remember one time when I was first taking karate, my cousin... We were just messing around, right? You know, and he's like, come on, show me some moves, show me some moves. So, boy, you know, I'm like, okay, boy, I got you. I, you know, drop back in a stance. You know, and he was bigger than I was, and he just came barreling toward me and just grabbed me up in a barrel and pulled me up, you know, and then I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> you know, you got to know, have, you got to have a ground game. You got to know how to grapple. So when you think about fighting, you know, it's not just punching and kicking, but you got to know holds and you got to know, you got to know how to slip holds. You got to know how to put people in holds. You got to know how to wrestle. That's part of it. And so that's where, if you watch MMA, that's what it is. It, you know, MMA said, you know, the guys who formed that says, look, you know, this, this whole stand up boxing stuff, that's not real fighting. Real fighting encompasses wrestling as well. And so that's how the MMA evolved is because it, it, it does it all. You know, they stand up, punch, kick, and all that, but then they end up on the ground, you know, in holds and all these different things, uh, submission holds and stuff. So, so part of fighting is grappling. And so it's no wonder that he says, fight the good fight of faith and then grab a hold of eternal life. It almost reminds me of, of Jacob when, when, he, when he grabbed the Lord, when he wrestled with the Lord and he grabbed him and said, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me, right? You know, sometimes we got to grab a hold of God. We got to grab a hold uh, of the kingdom and we got to hold on and we got to wrestle to stay connected to God, amen? To walk in his blessings. It's, and it's a struggle. And it's not that God has made it hard. It's not that, it's not that God's working against us, but it's, it's, it's the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's it right there. The world wants to turn us away from God. The, the devil is fighting against us, trying to turn us away from God. Our own flesh doesn't want to do the will of God. The Bible says that, that our flesh is enmity to God, right? That there's a struggle. That sometimes the things we want to do, we don't. And the things that we hate are the very things we find ourselves doing, is what Paul said. And so there's that, that eternal struggle there. And so you've got to grab... A hold. You got you to fight and you got to grab. <clears throat> and you got to hold on. It's kind of like Brother Melvin Tisdale used to say all the time. Sometimes you just got to grab a root and growl. He said that all the time. I, 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 he, he didn't know where that came from and I didn't know where it came from for sure. Um, I asked him one time, you know, he said it was just a saying. <clears throat> so I looked it up. One website says that that phrase is at least 100 years old. A hundred years old, grab a root and growl. And nobody really knows where it came from or what it's in reference to. But this is what I think. I think that was the punchline to a joke that has long since for, been forgotten. I really think that. I think sometime, well, at some point, a hundred years ago, there was a joke that went along with it, you know. And, you know, you know, and, and then uh, over time, people just used the punchline of that joke. Hey, you, got, you know, like that joke, you got to grab a root and growl. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was funny. Yeah, right, you got to grab. And then over time, we just forgot the joke part. <laughs> and all we remember is the grab a root and growl. That's what I think, but, you know, whatever. But the, the, the main point of it is, what it's saying is, is you got to, you got to buck up and you got to do what it takes to get the job done. Amen. Sometimes you just got to hold on and you got to hang in there. It kind of reminds me of when I was a teenager. I went over to my friend Greg's house and they had this pit bull. And they would play with this, they had a water hose that they would, just a little piece of a water hose and they would shake and that dog would grab that water hose. You know, he would just shake that hose while they were holding it. Well, they took that hose and they tied it up on a, on a, I want to say a clothes rod or something like that. And, and, that, and that dog is latched onto that hose and he's just hanging there, hanging in, in the air. Would not let go of that thing. I mean, once he latched down to it, you couldn't hardly pry him off of it. 
And that's kind of the, what I think grab a root and growl is. I'm not letting go. <laughs> Devil, you can't make me let go. Amen? Flesh, you can't make me let go. World, you can't make me let go. I'm holding on. And not only am I holding on to Him, but more importantly, He's holding on to me. Amen? And so you just grab that root and growl. And you trust God and you hold on and you wrestle and you fight your way through. No matter what happens. And you're going to be challenged in your faith. You're going to be challenged. And sometimes you may feel like God has abandoned you. Sometimes you may feel like God doesn't hear your prayers. Sometimes you may wonder, God, if you really love me, how could you let this happen to me? And that's when you need to grab a root and growl. That's when you need to hold on to your faith. That's when you need to fight the good fight. That's when you need to lay hold on to the eternal life and in the kingdom of God and trust in God, knowing that you are called of God and you have professed Him before many witnesses. Knowing who you are. That's the key. I'm a child of God. And that brings me to my last point. We have a calling and a profession from God. As a Christian, as a child of the King, I have been called by Him. I have professed Him before many witnesses. That calling and that profession is what guides me and what keeps me on track because I know who I am. It's kind of like the story about the, the man that didn't want to go to church and his mom came in and said, son, you've got to get up and go to church. He says, I don't want to, mama. Them people are mean to me. And I don't like them. And I don't want to go. And she's like, well, you've got to go because you're the pastor. Right? <laughs> I probably didn't tell that right, but something like that. <laughs> I don't know what that feels like. Yeah, I feel the love from everybody. But you know, sometimes it's like that. Knowing who I am will determine what I do. We talked about this the other day. When I know who I am, I know that I've been called by God. And so because I've been called, and because I've received that calling and professed that calling before many witnesses, that keeps me on track, so I get up and come anyway. <laughs> Amen. I get up and do anyway. All right? So we have to know that God has a purpose and plan for our lives. And if we don't know that, we're likely to wander away. And that's what happens to a lot of people, I think. It's not that they just really just reject Jesus. It's they don't realize their purpose. They don't know who they are, and they just get led astray. It's like the lost sheep that just wanders away from the herd. and just, oh, what's this over here? Oh, what's that? Hey, that looks good. Where'd everybody go? Oh, no. Amen? And so we got to be careful that we don't wander away from the truth of God, from Jesus Christ. <clears throat> we'll be like a ship with no sail being tossed about by the wind. We find ourselves being carried away by all kinds of crazy doctrines and beliefs and things like that. So we got to stay rooted and grounded in Christ and in His Word. Look with me at James chapter 1, verses 3 through 7. James chapter 1, starting verse 3. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. So we got to have faith. I've said this for many years. The Lord gave me this word. And I believe that it, it is the absolute truth. You take it for what it's worth. Faith 
is the currency of the kingdom of heaven. Sister Tracy brought this out the other night, huh? Yes, I can. Faith is the currency of the kingdom of heaven. That means that to receive anything from God, you've got to spend your faith. You've got to use your faith to receive it. For by grace are you saved through faith. Right? It is through your faith to believe in the completed work of Christ on Calvary. The saddest thing I've ever seen is a man who had no faith to believe. Pray the prayer, say the words, but not believe that God saved him. That's a lack of faith. You've got to have faith. You've got to receive it. When you pray that prayer, you say, I know, I prayed, I have repented, I have turned my life over to God, I am saved, I am a child of God. Why? Because I feel that way? No. Why? Because I saw fireworks go off? No. Why? Because I spoke in tongues? No. But because you have faith and you believe what the Word of God says. That's what faith is. It's not that we had any, any external feelings or anything like that, because you know what? Some people don't have those things. That don't mean they're not saved. Now, someone will disagree with me on that, and that's fine. But I want you to understand, it is faith. You receive it by faith. So we move on from salvation, whether it's the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, whether it's uh, speaking in tongues, whether it's a gift of healing, whatever it is that we need whether it's a, a, just a financial blessing, a miracle from God, whatever it is that we need, it will cost you faith to believe for that, to receive it. That's what it means. And so we have to fight. You have to fight. Sometimes you got to fight for that healing. you got to keep confessing that you're healed in Jesus' name, even when you don't feel it. Sometimes you got to say, what God's Word says, even though you're not seeing it. But you fight that fight of faith, professing the Word. Okay? <clears throat> Philippians 3 and 2. Paul, uh, I'm sorry, 3 and 12, Paul writes, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold or grab that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me or grabbed a hold of me. And so that's what we're doing. We are, we are fighting and grabbing a hold of Jesus because he's grabbed a hold of us. Amen? Fight and grab. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't get discouraged because I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of things that will come your way that will discourage you, that will overwhelm you. And sometimes you'll be tempted to walk away. Sometimes you'll be tempted to quit and give up. But you cannot give up because there is no other way. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's only one road that leads to eternal life, and that is Jesus. And you need to choose that road and don't let nothing turn you from it. Let's stand. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. We thank you, God, for this time together to be under the preaching and teaching and ministry of your word. And we pray, God, that you would just touch us. And let us put into practice, Lord, what your word says. That we'll be obedient children. God, that we will just allow you to have your perfect work done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.